Hey guys, what is up? It is I, your boy, Heel, back at it again with a new video. This will be my WWE NXT review and recap for September 27, 2017. Thank you all for watching this video and tuning back into the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up and share this video throughout your entire social media platforms. You can follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven where I tweet throughout Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT, Impact, and Pay-Per-Views. Overall, I thought NXT was a very good show with the main event being Adam Cole making his NXT in-ring debut against Eric Young of Sanity. But however, I want from you guys down below in the comment threads. Give me your thoughts on NXT if you enjoyed it or not this week. The show kicked off with William Regal making the big announcement of what's he going to do now that Asuka vacated the NXT Women's title. And as you all know, Kyrie Sane won the Mae Young Classic a couple weeks ago. And Triple H announced then on, the, on the, one of the post shows that Kyrie Sane will enter a fatal four-way at TakeOver Houston to determine the new NXT Women's Champion. So then William Regal announced that the three other women will compete in a series of matches leading up in a couple of weeks. From there, he'll determine who will join Kyrie Sane in the Fatal 4-Way. He wishes all the women the best of luck and all the women to also step up. We go right into the ring. You see Sanity coming in from all corners in Full State University as the crowd are chanting their name. Eric Young grabs the mic. He pretty much says that another group has come to NXT to make a mark and they mess with the group who wrote the book on making a mark. In this universe, time and space, it don't matter. The only thing that matters is chaos. The only constant is change. And tonight, Eric Young will take Adam Cole to the edge of sanity and he drops the mic and they all just, you know, leave. They go crazy, hyping up the main event, which I thought was pretty cool. And then we had the first match of the night, Lars Sullivan versus Oni Lorcan. Before the match took place, Lorca was being interviewed by Tracy St. Cloud, and he pretty much said that he doesn't like Lars Sullivan. He thinks he can push around Noe Jose, and he wants to see what Lars Sullivan can do to Oni Lorcan. The match pretty much was a one-sided beatdown of Lars Sullivan to Oni Lorcan. Um, there were moments in the match that where Lorcan has some, you know, offense in, but it was to no avail. Like, Lorcan does, like, a suicide dive from the top rope to the outside of the ring, and literally Sullivan catches him. But again, just a one-sided beatdown where Sullivan gets to win. It seemed like Sullivan was going to beat him up some more. And Danny Burch does the save. Here's the thing with Lars Sullivan, okay? First and foremost, the fact that he is taking a spot in the 2K18 DLC and not Andrade Sinalma is a crime. I'll say this. I think Lars Sullivan right now is a slow project. I'm not saying give him the NXT belt right now. But you build them up, you build them up, you build them up. The last thing you really want to do is rush something right now. But again, I like what they're doing with Lars Sullivan right now. And I'm willing to see what else they're going to do with them somewhere down the road. Then we had backstage uh, Kyla Braxton uh, asking Ruby Riot about the Akina duo requesting a rematch with her and her friend Nikki Cross. Ruby cuts her off and says Cross isn't her friend. She doesn't even know why Nikki was there, but if Peyton Royce and Billy K won another match, she'll give it to them, and if Cross shows up, she better stay out of her way. And then after this, we had the second match of the night. We had Heavy Machinery versus Demetrius Bronson and Patrick Scott. It was a pretty much a squash match with Heavy Machinery getting the win. Also, we had some footage from early in the day at the Performance Center. William Regal was talking to the press, and apparently Gargano walks around him, and Regal says that, hey, he thought about, you know, Gargano's request to getting a rematch with Andrade and Alma, and he obliged, so in two weeks from now, it will be Andrade and Alma versus Johnny Gargano, and Gargano is pretty much pumped, right? He's happy, finally. So, I look forward to seeing that match. I'm pretty sure Gargano will get the win, but nonetheless, I do feel it will be a very, very good match two weeks from now. And then after this, Roderick Strong is kind of promo at the Performance Center, as he's preparing for you know Drew McIntyre for next week, as you all know, it'll be Drew McIntyre versus Roderick Strong for the NXT title, and just pretty much a long dreaded promo by Roderick Strong. I hear the thing about Roddy, right? I think he's a good wrestler, all the fuck you want, but I just feel like him on the mic is just eh. Like sometimes they're hit and misses, if you will, but it just felt like forever and ever and ever this promo. Pretty much him talking about how Drew McIntyre cannot beat him, and how he's better than Drew McIntyre, and how he'll be the next NXT champion. We then get Vanessa Bourne versus Liv Morgan. And overall, I thought the match was just there. Nothing really much to say about it. Other than, hey, Vanessa Bourne, who was in the Mayan Classic, getting the television time this week. And then after all this, we get a interview from early in the week at the Performance Center from Aleister Black, who was sparring in the ring. And they asked him about Velveteen Dream. 
And pretty much what he says is that in the age of individuality, there's always that one that thinks they're unique, that they're special. All that they can do is antagonize the horde, but what they want is attention. He doesn't give in to a child who holds his breath or throws a tantrum to get what he wants. Alistair doesn't care what tricks Patrick pulls. He will not get Black's attention. Overall, I like where this feud's kind of going right now, where Velveteen Dream is doing all these things to get into Alistair's head, and Alistair Black is not going to give in. I know people are still scratching their heads to why this feud's even happening. I'm still going to give it a chance and see where this goes. And then after we get Cassius Ono versus Fabian Eichner, I thought the match was pretty, pretty good, actually. Fabian Eichner here held his own. He did some insane moves. He did like a Tobe Suicida where he literally forgot his size, right? He hopped on the top rope and then jumped on the Cassius Ono. It was a good back and forth match, but it was all said and done. Ono got the win with a big boot, not the rolling elbow, but nonetheless, again, a very, very good match. We go to like a video clip where they interviewed Drew McIntyre and he talked about how anyone who wants a shot can get one. Strong is the only one who stepped up. And when they stared down at each other and the undisputed attacked, Roddy looked out for himself, and Drew understands that. He also says Strong is a great competitor and could be NXT champion if he did not live in McIntyre's time. <laughs> Again, I look forward to the match next week, so we'll see where they go with that. We get a video package hyping up Kyrie Sane as she's claiming about the main class of trophy. And after we get the main event, Adam Cole versus Eric Young. Cole, O'Reilly, and Fish got in the ring, and Cole grabbed the mic and asked how this place survived before they even got there. He can feel something different in the air. A rally fish feel it as well. It's changed, a shock of the system. They are untouchable, unstoppable, undisputed, as this is their era pretty much. The match itself, Adam Cole versus Eric Young, I thought it was a good match. Even though Eric Young had most of the offense in, you had Saturday at ringside, you also had Fish and O'Reilly. There were moments where Fish and O'Reilly tried to get up on the apron, and there was this huge brawl, right, between Sanity, Fish, and O'Reilly outside the ring. And Eric Young is on the top rope, and he decided to either do the diving elbow, or if not, jump on everyone on the outside. He jumps on everyone on the outside. He gets back into the ring, and Adam Cole does a Shining Wizard, and gets the one, two, three, a standing Shining Wizard for the win. Adam Cole wins. Overall, again, I'm happy for Adam Cole getting the win. And that was NXT. Again, a very good show. Adam Cole got the win. And next week, we're getting Roger Strong versus Drew McIntyre for the NXT Championship. And in two weeks, we're getting Gargano versus Andrade 2. Give me your thoughts down below in the comment thread of this video on NXT this week. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Make sure you like all my videos. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, it's I, your boy Heel, and I'm out. Brah.